Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to forego with the normalities, and we're not going to do the gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents thing today. But you just did it! Don't worry about what I just did. Ladies and gentlemen, we got something we need to talk about. We're going to be putting up a template for you. Those of you who are having some issues, see, all of you are afraid. And it's okay to be afraid. I used to be afraid. I used to be scared. But I ain't scared no more. I ain't afraid no more. I ain't got time for fear. I ain't got time for afraidness. Freightness? What the is freightness? Well, it's going to be exactly that that you're going to get when I put my foot swiftly right up the crack of... Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. I won't, I won't ask no more questions. All right. We're going to turn down our Hotel Khalifa, and we're going to get to um, the nature of this video. Ladies and gentlemen, we're not going to talk about this complaint. This is just us letting you know. For instance, many of you need to file civil complaints. Many of you are afraid of the courts because the courts have made you afraid. So we're going to do a video specifically for you, showing you how you can go about getting redress. Okay? That's for you. Where you can get the money to pay for an attorney under limited power of attorney not under your your full power of attorney where he was an officer of the court but know where he's your officer you see what y'all don't know there is no law that says that an attorney has to be an officer of the court hold on now see attorney is a part of the executive branch technically I want you all to understand this because most people don't get this I'm gonna stop the music in the background for a second because I need to explain this to you. Most of you don't get this. The Attorney General and his office is under Article 3 of the Constitution for the United States. Not under Article 2, not under Article 1. Under Article 3 is the Attorney General for the United States. If you don't believe me, just go and type in the Judiciary Act, September 24th, 1789, and just put in the word search. Attorney General. That's where the Attorney General Office was created. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> that's Article 3. The Attorney General is under Article 3, has been under Article 3 since the very beginning. Shh! Don't tell, no, <laughs> don't tell nobody. It, yes, that's the point, and nobody got it. No one. Because they never intended for the attorneys to be anything but officers of the court. They didn't intend for them to be officers of the executive branch. They didn't intend for them to be controlling police forces. That wasn't the intent. Remember, the government was never supposed to rule over people. So there was no intent to rule over the people through enforcement. They created all that stuff later. Some of you who have been doing this for a while, and there's not too many of you, they understand what I just did, and they're going to do some research on what I just did, and they're going to realize, wait a minute, the Attorney General is judicial branch. Oh, no, that's a conflict of interest. You, you can't do that. <laughs> okay. Again, that's what I was telling people, how to get rid of their attorneys when they appoint an attorney as a public defender. Wait, how can the state prosecute me and then represent me at the same time? That's a conflict of interest. The quickest way to get rid of an attorney in a case. Don't uh, uh, don't sit up here and be like, I want to talk to you because I got a case going on. Ladies and gentlemen, I had a gentleman call me yesterday. He told me he had an urgent matter and he needed to talk to me. So I called him back four times. Didn't answer. I texted him and said, I called you back four times. He didn't answer. So he called me back and he says, look, I'm sorry. But I got this situation. And I said, what's your situation? I got caught tomorrow. I said, you got caught when? Tomorrow. I said, that's a good thing, ain't it? Well, I need your help. I said, no, you ain't getting my help. 
said, why not? Aren't you there to help people? I said, yeah, I'm here to help people. But I ain't here to help those people. What people are you talking about? Those people who want to put their stress on me, who want me to stress with them, who want to wait till the last minute and think I'm going to wait till the last minute with them? Think that I'm going to rush and put my life on hold just to help them? I said, oh, no, y'all ain't been listening to the videos. I already done told y'all I ain't doing that bull no more. And that's the conversation. Every question he asked, it was, oh, no, you don't understand. As I've already promised, it don't work like that. Ladies and gentlemen, SACOM is getting ready to start helping those of you with mortgages. We're going to start by giving you a template to go into court with. Now, we've already given you the act. Uh, matter of fact, I'll pull it up in a second. These things are covered. They're covered. Oh, this is an authorization. That's an international bill of exchange. I ain't supposed to be showing you all that. I can get in trouble. <laughs> anyway, let's um, get back to the act, if y'all don't mind. This is not the act. I got a... Where is properties? Where is your... Give me a second to move this out of the way. That ain't it. Get that out of here. Properties. How do I get rid of properties? It just showed me it ain't letting me get rid of it. Yeah, let's get rid of that and that and that. Yes, we're going to say that. Oh, I can't show you all this because you see this stuff? This is SATCOM stuff. Y'all ain't supposed to be seeing that. So let's get off of that page and go all the way over here. Nope, this is not what I want. Oh, didn't show you all any personal information. So, I mean... Just that's just stuff so y'all can know. You'll know nothing about the details of it. That's the paperwork that's going out to all the sap packers. Yeah, that's just me <laughs> slightly showing you what we're doing. Okay, I'm gonna increase this one because I can use this one. I don't know why properties. Oh, I'm sorry. Hold on. I know what the problem is. Slide on over. Whew, that's what I'm looking for right there. See, I went through all of that just for that reason right there. So let's decrease this size come on give me my arrow that one right there let's decrease that size so i can see my corners because you got to got to got to be all up in the corners now the corners is important got to be kicking it in the corners ladies and gentlemen get this real quick make this real quick we're gonna get rid of this and we're gonna increase this so that y'all can see what i'm talking about now, that's what I'm talking about, okay? Right there. This is the March 9, 1933 Act, Congressional Record, 73rd Congress, page 79. I mean, page 78. Sorry, let me show you page 78. Sorry. All right. And this is the top right corner that we're going to be considering. You need the very last paragraph of the left side of the page, which is the beginning of the amendment to the Federal Reserve Act. Ladies and gentlemen, circulating notes are Federal Reserve notes and Federal Reserve Bank notes. That's what a circulating note is. Don't get in your head that there is some special piece of paper that they're using. Federal Reserve notes, Federal Reserve Bank notes. This is what the, the banks use to exchange uh, advances between each other. Remember, it's for advances. Let's talk about that. These banknotes are issued against the securities of obligations, contracts of the United States to the amount of the Federal Reserve banknotes, which shall be equal to the face value of the direct obligation contract of the United States, so deposited as a security. Remember there to be deposited as a security. So when people were putting special deposits on their item, they had no idea. So, oh, I had no idea. That's why I was doing it, homie. That's what some are going to say. They had no idea. When you went to the bank and you signed your promissory note, you gave it back to the bank. It's called closing. Ladies and gentlemen, you gave them a security deposit. You didn't owe them any money after that. How do we know? Well, let's finish looking at the act. It says, and when issued, those circulating notes or Federal Reserve notes against the security of the notes. Yes, you must understand, 
they create monies. It's not they don't get it. They don't need to get it from the treasury. This thing allows them to create it themselves. This is what the if you look at money creation, just go in there and look at Professor Warren. Look at what he's written. He will tell you, and there are a couple other professors out there telling you the same thing. When you deposit something into the bank, the bank immediately creates the money, which needs you to pay attention, creates a public debt. Hold on. Why does it create a public debt? Because you don't finish your part of the chain. What do you mean? Don't say I'm supposed to do anything else. No. The debt has been created when you created the security. You don't discharge it. It's your job to discharge the debt, not their job. See, it's discharged upon payment. Better go back and look at the so-called June 5th Act, which is some people refer to, and it is referred to as House Joint Resolution 192. It's to be discharged upon payment, dollar for dollar. Well, we already know that these are dollar for dollar issues because you're going to see right here. Hold on. Wait a minute. How could I pass that up? I couldn't have passed that up. It's here somewhere. Oh, there it is right there. For the same purpose. Uh oh. You're supposed to be. Got to click this one. Apologize. For the same purpose as national banknotes. So they're dollar for dollar, ladies and gentlemen. They're at par. See? Receivable at par. Dollar for dollar. Discharged. Upon payment, dollar for dollar. Some of you guys are getting some ideas at what I'm just telling you, what I'm showing you in the act right now. All you guys got to do is study the paragraph. This is your remedy. Everybody thought 411 was your remedy. Now look, 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 look. If you look at all of our documents, it says 411 is your remedy. Well, this is 411, ladies and gentlemen. This is section 411 of Title 12. Uh, some of you don't know what I'm talking about right there. It's over your head. Look, the government must give you a remedy. They can't just give you a problem. They must give you a way to resolve the problem. They must give you a way to resolve the problem. Let me say that again because some of y'all are not going to understand it because some of y'all are going to look at it from a different angle. They must give you a way to resolve the problem. That is mandatory. It's not suggestive. So let's get back up here to the understanding. It says, and when the circulating notes are issued against the security of notes, remember, you give them the promissory note and they create circulating notes. So when circulating notes are issued as a result of the security of the notes, drafts, bills of exchange, bankers' acceptances, Acquired under the provisions of this act, we want to stay under this act. We don't want to be under any other act. We don't want to be under any other code. We don't want to be under any other ordinance. We want to be under this act. Ladies and gentlemen, it's raining outside. Get you under this act so you can protect yourself. You don't understand. Okay, when you bring in all that other junk, that some people are going to want to bring in birth certificates they were born on the 4th of july in the month of december okay bringing in all the other junk pay attention bankers acceptances acquired under the provisions of this act it's part of the same paragraph this is the amendment to the federal reserve act okay ladies and gentlemen stay under this paragraph do not bring in anything else the only things that you can bring in is this act, the Congressional Act. Hold on, because y'all needs to understand. Y'all need to understand the Presidential Proclamation 2039 and the amendment. Hold on, because y'all need to understand. Title 4 of Section 401. Sorry, I got to do it over here. Of the Federal Reserve Act. Ladies and gentlemen, these three things are under this paragraph. Presidential Proclamation 2039, the Congressional Record, 
and the Congressional Act of March 9, 1933, and the Federal Reserve Act. That's four items, ladies and gentlemen. That's it. Nothing else. You cannot, uh, don't care what they did in 1942. I don't care what they did in 1992. I don't care what they did last year. Unless it was an amendment to this act right here, then it don't count. Now, yes, they did amend the Federal Reserve Act. This section, this paragraph, they did amend it in 1945. The only thing they amended, and I, wanna, I want y'all to pay attention because some people ain't going to understand. Do your research and uh, verify it. If you find something different, you need to just give a holler. A holler. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, so that you'll know, the thing that they amended is this part right here, circulating notes. What type of circulating notes? Well, the, the act allowed them to issue circulating notes, see? Circulating notes in blank, duly registered and countersigned. That's what they got rid of. They didn't get rid of circulating notes because circulating notes are Federal Reserve notes. How do we know that circulating notes are Federal Reserve notes? Well, let's find out. Such notes shall be obligations of the Federal Reserve Bank procuring the same and shall be in the form prescribed by the Secretary of the Treasury and shall be redeemable in all parts of the United States at par for the same purposes of national bank notes. So we've already talked to you about your notes, drafts, bills of exchange, bankers' acceptances being utilized for the same purposes of national bank notes. They're utilized for advancements. National bank notes are utilized for advancements between banks and shall be redeemable in lawful money of the United States upon presentation to the United States Treasury or at the bank of issue. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to pay attention to this paragraph because this is what was amended. We're going to go right here. This is our whole right there. The Secretary of the Treasury is authorized and empowered to prescribe regulations governing the issuance, redemption, replacement, retirement, and destruction of such circulating notes, and the release and or substitution of security thereof. Such circulating notes shall be subject to the same tax as provided by law for the circulating notes of national banks, secured by 2% of the bond of the United States. No such circulating notes shall be issued under this paragraph, under this paragraph, after the President has declared by proclamation that the emergency recognized by Presidential Proclamation of March 6, 1933 has terminated. Ladies and gentlemen, first of all, if you go and you'll see that this act is still available because it has not been terminated. They told you in 1973, when you look at the War Powers document, here it is right here. Um, let's go, what we're going to do is we're going to do control F and we're going to put F O U R. I'm just going to put four. Four! Oh, I can't do that. Uh, no, there, the word four is there, but it's not going to let me search it that way. Let's see if I can get to it. When we're going to get to the good part. Get on to the good part. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, give me a second. I think I can find it. I should put y'all on pause while I'm looking for it because I don't want to take y'all all the way. We're going all the way. If the two of us don't want it, I bet my money on it. Starting today, we're going all the way. Sorry, Jeffrey Osborne. That's my uh, that's my boy because he knows how to sing. All right, I'm not going to be able to find it this way, ladies and gentlemen. It's the fact that you know. Let's see if we can find that. T R U M A N. Let's see if we can find that. Nope. See, it's not letting me do a word search, and I don't like that because this is a searchable document. But it could be that it's not looking at it as a searchable document. So let's make sure it's not a searchable document. Yeah, it's not a searchable document because this is not doing the word. So that's the problem. Okay. So what I am, 
was trying to do is show you that they've documented that there were four uh, emergency war powers that were still extant. Now it doesn't use the word extant here. It just shows that there are four of them that were that the committee found were still um, in effect. And I thought this would be able to take me to it, and it didn't do it. Okay. It lets you know right here. This is this is the section. This is one of the sections. It mentions it several times. Since March 9, 1933, see, still ongoing, all I had to do was go to my note that I put here. The United States has been in a state of declared emergency. Since 1933, March 9, 1933, March 9, 1933, wait, what happened on March 9, 1933? Let's go ahead and let's check. March 9th, interesting, interesting. Okay, so let's, let's find out what happened on March 9, 1933. The United States has been in the state of declared national emergency. In fact, there have been, in effect, four presidential proclaimed states of national emergency. In addition to the national emergency declared by President Roosevelt in 1933. So hold on. In addition. In addition. Oh, I can't even do that. That ain't going to let me do that. That's the problem. I need this one. All right, let me undo that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we can go with in addition. It ain't going to let me select it because of how the screen is. So let's focus on, in addition to the national emergencies declared by President Roosevelt, there are four more. The one declared by Truman in 1950, then the one declared by Nixon, and Nixon. Well, look at that, ladies and gentlemen, that foe. And when you add up foe, you know what you get? Ongoing. You see, it says until, let's go back here. The national emergency, it says the proclamation that the emergency recognized by president, uh, by proclamation of March 6, 1933 has terminated. Now, what you don't know, we got to go to page 70, 80, 80, no, it's not even 80. Nope, 79. Right here. The first provision of the bill validates and maintains the authority exercised by the President of the United States in the proclamation relating to the banks of the nation issued by the President on March 6, 1933. See, it validates and maintains it. So we find here that Congress continued to maintain since March 9, 1933. The United States has been in a state of national emergency. Wait, how do we know? Because it says the Section 2 confers upon the president the power bestowed under the act of October 6, 1917, National Emergency Act, or the Trading with the Enemy Act. Yes, this is the National Emergency Act, the original National Emergency Act. This is where the term originally appeared. That's why the presidents declare national emergencies, because they're declaring war. I'm not joking. This is a war bill. Go ahead and see. It's a military bill. Regardless of whether or not the country is involved in war. See? It's a military act. Now, these proclamations gave forth the 470 provisions of federal law. Ladies and gentlemen, to repeal this, to terminate this, that means these 470 laws, these hundreds of statutes delegating to the president these extraordinary powers, would have to be repealed. Remember, these proclamations gave forth to 470 provisions of federal law. Sorry, I got a call coming in. I got to take this. This is necessary. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, sorry, had to take that call. That call was from one of the CEOs of one of the organizations that we put together. And we had some things to discuss because there are some Rocky Mountains, and we needed to smooth out those Rocky Mountain path. Look, I just had somebody email me, and he was asking for a copy of the document that we put together that was the 401 document. He says that he couldn't find it. Ladies and gentlemen, I can't take you there because this system is not connected to the internet. So I'm going to pause you for a moment. I'm going to make sure it's there. Once 
Okay, ladies and gentlemen. The young man said that he could not find a particular form, the SEC 401 form, um, which is sec Section 401. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and rename this. We're going to do that. We're going to do the small e, Section 401, six paragraphs, Section 18 of the Federal Reserve Act. So that's that one. And that's how we're going to do that for you. Okay, what y'all need to know in order to get to this form, you have to go to satcom 911.com forward slash PDFS. See that right there, PDFS? All capital letters. It'll take you to our download section. When you get there, you're going to go to the very first one, a legal understanding. You're going to double click on that. When you click on, this is a legal understanding. When you click on a legal understanding, you're going to click on a promissory note. When you click on a promissory note, you'll have all of these documents here. Download all of them, every single one of them. And then you're going to put together the major ones that I told you about. Section 401, the congressional record. Now, see, this is the full congressional record. We don't want you just putting that whole thing up there because that right there is a whole lot of congressional records that you got to put up there. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the four pages. But this is Presidential Proclamation 2039. You got the congressional record. You got the March 9, 1933 Act. Did I put the March 9, 1933 Act? We're going to have to find the March 9, 1933 Act. So give me a second, y'all.